The closest feeling of fishing on the ocean when you're fishing in fresh water is to be out on the Great Lakes when you go out about two to ten miles. The water there is anywhere from shades of green to blue and you actually feel like you're fishing on the ocean. It's in those deep waters that I really enjoy fishing for Pacific salmon, steelhead and lake trout. One of my biggest challenges, along with other anglers that fish the Great Lakes, is trying to get your bait or lure close to these fish. The Great Lakes are deep, they're big, and there's no structure like there is in inland lakes. So the fish can be suspended anywhere. So I really rely on my fish finder to try to locate some gentle breaks and also bait fish schools and individual salmon and trout that are feeding on those bait fish. Once I locate those areas, I have another challenge, is to try to get those fish close to my lures. And one of the things that I rely on is a flasher. A lure Jensen flasher looks like a piece of metal or a piece of plastic, and it's designed to go through the water from side to side. And as it does that, it gives off a lot of reflection and flash that looks like a salmon that's turning and flashing. The salmon and trout can spot these flashers sometimes from 30, 40 feet away. They also feel the vibration. And then when they come in close, they see that smaller lure that's behind it, and that's what they grab. The distance between your flasher and the actual lure that you're using can be very important. I find that when fish are aggressive, especially early and late in the day, you can use a short leader. In the middle of the day sometimes, we run longer leaders that are up to 10 or 15 feet long. The trolling speed is very important when you're using a flasher. You want to have a really nice side-to-side -side rolling action so you get a lot of flash from it. The best way to see that action whether you clip it onto a downrigger or on a diving device like a dipsy diver, is to just set it in the water beside the boat, lower it down a couple of feet, and observe the action and try different speeds. If you go too fast, the flasher will flip over. So you want a nice side-to-side -side action, and that also gives the lure that's trailering it a nice erratic action swimming behind it. And it's that erratic action that actually triggers fish into striking. Flashers definitely work well to attract fish in clear water like the Great Lakes. And for trolling, they can really help you catch a lot of fish. Many of the Great Lakes have an excellent salmon and trout fishery. In case you didn't know, Chinook salmon can eat their own body weight every week. This is good news for fishermen that are targeting them because it means that they literally swim around feeding all the time. The key though to getting them to strike is to figure out what size and shape of bait fish that they're feeding on so you can match that to the lure that you're using. One of my favorite rigs to use is a lure Jensen cut bait. This is a very unique presentation because the cut bait looks and swims like a very common food fish that's found in the Great Lakes. It could mimic a herring, an owlwife, or smelt. It has a very natural wobble and a very side-to-side -side action that a lot of times will get those fish that are feeding to strike it. The cut bait rig is made up of two parts. One is the actual head, which is made out of plastic, which gives the bait a swimming action. It comes in a strip size and also a wider size that you can put a whole herring in. And then there's a pin in that head where you can slide in either a whole herring or a strip and use the pin to anchor it. A treble hook that's attached to the leader can either just hang or you can anchor it through the actual soft body to give the body an additional bend. Both techniques can work really well. The key to getting salmon to strike is the speed and the presentation that you get from the bait. You can rig the bait so it swims quite straight and goes through the water like a bait fish that's having a hard time swimming but going straight, or you can get it to have a nice wobble where it's almost flipping and circulating. I find that when salmon are aggressive, they really like the roll that spins around. So they're attracted to it and they strike it. Other times when they're less aggressive, you want the strip to actually swim a little bit slower so it's not rolling as much. So varying the speed from slow to faster, and changing your path will change the action from a straight swimming action to a rolling action. And a lot of times that change will trigger a strike. A properly trolled cut bait rig works extremely well and on some days where hard body lures and spoons don't work, it can make the difference between catching trout and salmon or not catching them.